Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi. Today, my friend Kanishka and I are filming a recap of the men's discipline at the 2021 US National Figure Skating Championships. I am a little giggly and laughing right now because <laughs> this is about our third attempt to try to get this done, but we've both had interruptions on both ends. So we apologize if this is quick and not as thorough, but if you're interested in watching, we appreciate that you stay tuned. Kanishka, are you ready to do this again? <laughs> sure. I have a feeling I'm going to get interrupted one more time, but it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. We'll just plow through this. So... Congratulations, Nathan Chen. He has officially become the five-time U.S. national champion. I can't believe we're living in a time with such an amazing athlete who is still competitive and has more great things to achieve. This is truly a great time in skating for a lot of fans. And he would be a six-time national champion, according to our Beach your friend, Brennan Ning, who counts the 2015 U.S. Nationals as one of his big wins. Because that, that was the season he came on as a debut, when he debuted, and then they kind of like held his marks, right? So, Oh, that's uh, when he came in second. Oh, I think they put him third, right? He was like behind Max Aaron and Adam Rippon, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, and he outskated both of them, technically anyways. But now he can skate out... T um, he can still outskate them technically, <laughs> and he actually wins the title this time around. So let's talk about his performances here. It's worth checking out both his short and long programs. I really like both of them this season. The short is to selections of some Latin pieces of music. It's really catchy. I like towards the end where it goes, mi corazón, mi corazón. Uh, I think the big thing to point out in the short program is that he brought out the quad Lutz to open out that program. It looked good. It was sweet. And then he saved his combination, which was the quad flip triple toe to be the last jumping element. So he earned the 10% bonus. So he's kind of preparing for being competitive against some of the other top men in the world because it sounds like the World Figure Skating Championships might happen during a worldwide pandemic. But nonetheless, that's what people are saying. And then the free skate, there was just one tiny mistake and it's on the opening quad lutz it wasn't a fall but it was a heavy step out everything else kanishka looked perfect attempted four quads and i really liked that free program of his i believe it's to violin concerto number one along with some other pieces that are more modern it just works for me i think if i like the song i like the program and Especially when it's clean, Nathan Chen has come so far with his triple axles doing um, some transitions into it even. So he's come such a long way with that jump that's held him back in the past. And just because we want to be extra critical, I am a fan of Nathan Chen. He's one of my favorites. I love this program. If I'm honest, his free program especially is a little bare in between the jumping elements and the spins. There's not so much choreography and the transitions are not as difficult as Vincent Joe's or Jason Brown's, especially Jason's. So that is one critique I have of him for his programs. And it makes sense because he did not win either segment of the competition based on program components. Yeah, first of all, I really do... Um... How to first point out, I really like the change of costume for the short program. I think it was one of the big talks, um, at least amongst the followers on Twitter that I have. And yeah, it was not anything so extravagant or masterclass as far as a design goes. However, it was simple, but works, you know, for someone like Nathan Chen. It was not awful. Um, so hopefully as we go ahead to the World Championships in Sweden in March... Hopefully we get a new costume for the free program as well. Um, but regardless, like the way he is skating, he is skating to peak at the World Championships, and it'll be quite the battle. As we like to always po point out, it's uh, like it's almost like a two-person competition at the World Championships every year, it seems like. So it'll be kind of nice to see Nathan Chen and Yuzuru Hanyu go for it. But there are many um, contenders for that gold medal, including some of our own who we will be discussing in the next few minutes. So yeah. again, congratulations to Nathan Chen. And yeah, we'll see what happens at the World Championships.
Yeah, so let's talk about the other contenders. So in second place, we have Vincent Joe, who is a bronze medalist at Worlds, and he showed us why he won the bronze medal because in that short program he was absolutely flawless and that was a beautiful piece that he skated to it was a the vincent program starry starry night very lyrical piece of music that he's skating to and the jumps Ooh, vincent brought out the quad lutz with the arm a variation arm over the head i know everyone was correcting me on twitter saying it's called the ripon lutz Yes, I know that, but if that's not the official name, I don't like to use it. So nonetheless, he does that so beautifully on the jumps where he does include the arm variation. And he also did a second quad in that short program. I said in our preview that he wants to close the gap between him and Nathan Chen, and he did so much to the point where some skating fans thought he could have won the competition before both Nathan and Vincent skated because Nathan, you know, you never know if he's going to be perfect, but Vincent really stood on his own here. The free skate was very much a different vibe. I believe that program is called Algorithm by Muse. It's very different. I don't expect many skating fans to enjoy both, but I do appreciate that Vincent is growing artistically and paying more attention to the choreography. And you can tell he just works really hard to keep every piece of the intricate choreography in and actually if you want to compare Vincent and Nathan's programs without the jumps and the spins I think Vincent has more in his program but that being said Vincent did make some costly errors in the free skate he did go for the quad lutz and fell on it and also popped a jump as well and that's a big loss of points especially when you're competing against Nathan Chen thankfully it was enough to uh, keep the silver medal over the rest of the men. Yeah, stylistically, I think that Vincent and Nathan are two different types of skating, just very similar to dance. Like, there's the classical ballet, and then there's yeah. um, more modern contemporary. And I think that's kind of how I kind of, like, differentiate the two styles amongst the two top men here at U.S. Nationals. I think that Vincent has a very fluid style, and lyrical programs work best for him. Like, we saw that with his short program here, to um, Story Story Night, and also his Chasing Car Show program from the Olympic season was a good oh, yeah. vehicle for him as well. So I think as we move forward um, in, with his career, I hope that he knows what brings out the best in his skating. And I'm not saying that you need to stick to what you know, but like sometimes just know that that is uh, something that you can be comfortable with really great for him and i think he is um as you said just in like merging the gap between the two of them and i think if worlds happens it seems like more likely than not it will he will be contending for the podium again i think there were so many naysayers including myself after his performances at nationals last season however i do want to take that back and say that he, this season he has actually grown artistically and also looks like the jumps are getting stronger. And I also had to credit him for not letting his personal life get in the way because I think there was so much being reported about how his mom might be a little bit of a stage parent. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm glad to see that he's rediscovering the joy of his own skating. Piggybacking off of what you said earlier, it's kind of like two phrases I know. If something ain't broke, don't fix it and also like know your strengths so he's definitely going to want to set himself up well I could tell he's also working on the jumps because he used to be someone who was prone to under rotations those look the better here and I hope they continue to do so but yeah paying attention to the choreography is big for him and then rounding out the top three is Jason Brown also rounding out the veteran men this year he broke a hundred for the short program so that's a great accomplishment for him and he did so without doing a quad at all so the short program was to i think it's called cinnamon i always say it wrong yeah cinnamon so it's a very entertaining piece but that being said jason brown can entertain while it's still looking like fine art the edges are great his extensions his lines and the spins oh i almost want to say like 
Jason's raw skating outside of the technical elements are just as enjoyable as the jumps and the spins. Like he gets down on his knees, his Ina Bowers, his spiral positions are also great. Transitions top notch. He definitely earned the high program component marks in the short program. In the free skate, we had some issues. So he did fall on his quad attempt and pop another jump. That being said, the rest of the program was amazing. I love how he held the Ina Bauer position and the transition into one of his last spins. So going from a slide into the Ina Bauer was breathtaking. He also won in components in the free skate as well over Nathan Chen. There's some skating fans who love him so much that they said he needed all 10s, <laughs> which I'm not sure if they're joking or not. I'm a very literal person, so I'm not good with exaggeration that's meant to be as a joke but you know he did win in components a lot of people say it should be a lot higher than Nathan's but hey at least he beat Nathan's right and his free skate I always say it wrong is it slaughter on 10th avenue that is correct yeah okay yeah and your friend on twitter Matthew Rusk you can just tell that he's a big fan of Jason Brown he is very particular about his skaters artistry but if it's approved by Matthew, both programs, then Jason is doing something absolutely right. Yeah, Matthew, like the last couple of times I called him up, um, we were discussing Jason Brown because we have not seen him in the Grand Prix season because he trains out in Canada. We did not, unfortunately, get to see him at Skate America this season. Again, due to the global pandemic, only people who train here can compete. And... Yeah, so we were both looking forward to seeing Jason's programs um, in competition. And even though I have not talked to him since the men's free skate, which I'll probably call him after this, um, I'm sure he will talk about how much he enjoyed the two programs. I think he did mention that the short program was one of his favorites um, in the last couple seasons. His other favorite was purple, like the Prince program that oh. he did. So I think this one kind of like takes it to the next level. And that's the great thing about J Jason Brown is that it kind of like takes you back to the old 6.0 judging system to some extent where artistry was pretty much rewarded 50-50 with the technical marks for the most part. Yes, there would be some corrupt judging as there's corrupt judging in this one. However, like you got to see the range of marks and who judged and who all that wonderful stuff. And, um, I think Jason does a great job of blending the two, and I commend him for even going for the quad, considering that he had mentioned in that article that NBC Sports published that like training was not as easy um, this time around um, compared to the seasons in the past due to the pandemic. So the fact that he actually was able to skate a really clean, short program and to skate a relatively clean uh, free skate shows that he's in... He has like a good, balanced head. And... I look forward to seeing this program grow, especially by Worlds. And I think um, he did say that he's going to keep the Sitterman short program for the Olympics. And I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps the Slaughter and 10th um, Avenue free skate because, again, we've only seen it once, and if not twice, if the Worlds are going to happen. So, But knowing Jason Brown, whatever he ends up coming up with as far as programs, they always keep you mesmerized, and you're just in awe of his abilities. Um and if I was ever a skater or a dancer of some sort, then that's kind of what I would like love to emulate is someone like Jason Brown. And deservedly so, he deserved those component marks. And I'm excited to see him go back to Worlds again. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that um, he reminds you of a skater from the 6.0 era. And that's very true. I also think he does a good job of making IJS look really good because his spin levels, like... Level fours, positive GOEs, and, you know, we're under IG, IJS because he's that talented with the positions, the rotations. You know, jumps get tricky, but footwork, step sequence, usually a level four. I believe it was a level three in the free program. Don't know what that's all about. But yeah, as you said, Jason blends the two eras really well. And then speaking of the free program, I just saw on Twitter that he officially said he's either going to keep this program for the Olympic year or go back to an old one so not get a new one and he has a lot of great free programs to choose from in the past 
Yeah, definitely. It'll be very interesting to see what he chooses because, really, his skating is very immaculate and it just takes my breath away. So. Especially if Brian Orser says so. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I agree. And Brian's a legend in his own right, so... He absolutely is. So those were the top three. Definitely check out both their shorts and longs. And Kanishka, what was special this year about the men's is that the top six from the short program remained in the top six after the free skate. Usually that doesn't happen because there's more of a shakeup between the rankings, usually from third to 10th place, but not so much this year. So we got to see some younger athletes, some newer names, in the top six for the short program and they held their own in the free skate and kept their position so that is something to celebrate so let's go ahead and start with the fourth place finisher Yaroslav Paniot and he had the very entertaining Elvis program it was so good it was actually third in the free skate but he ended up in fourth overall because his short program trailed Jason Brown's but that just shows how good it was. It was completely clean with, I believe, three quad attempts, a uh, quad flip and two toes. So good. Oh, and I like the costume. I like that it wasn't your stereotypical white one piece suit that other skaters will do. And it wasn't cheesy or corny at all. It was quite entertaining, really well done. He's a natural performer, kept his hair really smooth after that free skate. And I'm just happy to see more from him. Fourth place, that's essentially on the podium here at Nationals. So definitely earned the pewter medal from me. I think he was also an audience favorite. Yeah, I have to be honest, I never really got to watch his full program. Oh. I have been running a little bit of a fever the last couple of nights. Mm. Um, so sometimes my head tends to daze off very quickly. So unfortunately, I was not able to watch his um, free skate just because my... Headspace is not great at that time. Um, however, I do take it from um, your um, words, Justin, that it was a memorable program. And sometimes these Elvis programs can be a little bit corny and cheesy, as you said. Uh, but I'm sure that if it was not done literally as an interpretation to Elvis, that maybe there's something to be excited about. And I think um, a quad flip and two quad toes, that's something to be excited about, especially. And this is my first time hearing his name. So if he's been on the scene for quite some time, I do apologize in that sense. However, I think it's always great to see emerging talent, especially in the United States, because we do have such a depth um, within the, like the leaders and then the contenders and so forth. Um, and I think this is one of those skaters that we probably will be looking forward to watching next year to see how he kind of like becomes one of those like wild cards maybe uh, because again like the ice is slippery as Scott Hamilton points out and anything can happen so yeah we'll have to see more of him as, and see if he is Olympic material if not there's always the next era of skating that happens right after the Olympic season and I think this is one of those names that we can probably put in the contention mix um, as we move forward from Beijing. Absolutely. And then in fifth place, we have Maxim Numov or Neumov. I've heard it pronounced both ways, so don't know which one is correct. Sorry, Maxim, if you're watching this. He also did a really good job along with um, Yaro. That's a nickname of the guy who finished in fourth. He had a clean long program. And I always appreciate when we see that because a lot of times the men tend to go for very difficult quads, which means they run the risk of not having a clean program. But it was nice to see Maxim just land everything, all his triples. I will say the landings weren't so smooth on all of his jumps, but it was a solid short and long for him. And it was great to see that a newer name can place as high as fifth without a quad if they skate really well. And his program component marks were comparable to Yaro's. So he's another name we want to add to the list. Kudos for him for staying in the top six after the short program. Yeah, and for those watching who have watched the sport of figure skating evolve over the years, they probably recognize his last name because he oh, is yeah. the son of the 1994 World Pairs Champions. Um, and um, I knew that was that name sounded familiar, even though I started watching the skating back in the 2000s uh, era. So 
Um, but his accomplishments so far don't surprise me, considering that he has two great parents who were notable in their own right. And it's kind of nice to see him make a splash for himself. And sometimes that's difficult to do so, especially when they were world champions, because sometimes we look at the Olympics as a high accomplishment. Mm-hmm. But I think after that, the next biggest event in skating is the world championship. So this fifth place finish is um, something that he should definitely be proud of. And a fifth place means that he qualifies for the next year's U.S. national yeah. championships as long as the requirements stay the same. And yeah, it's kind of nice to see these young names that have very familiar last names because <laughs> even though one of the other skaters had to withdraw due to some technicality or something, like he's the mom, he's the son of 1999 Four Continents Grand Prix Final Champion Tatiana yeah. Malindina. So it seems like a lot of these, like, we're kind of getting a little throwback to the 90s with the emerging talent in the United States. Um, so. And I'm I'm actually excited for that because I think that there's um, that was such a golden era of skating, like the Tara Lipinski's and the Michelle Kwans were competing in the mid '90s. So to see now those competitors' children come coming on um, and competing in the seniors, it's just very exciting. And um, again, fifth place, nothing to like laugh about at all. That's like a placement I think that a lot of people would love to accomplish, and I think considering he's one of the newer names that are being thrown into the spotlight right now, I think he should be very proud of a top five finish. I definitely agree with that. And rounding out the top six is a name that we're actually familiar with, Jimmy Ma. He made a splash a few seasons ago at Nationals when one of his short programs went viral. I believe it was Turned Down For What, which is a very like drop beat hip hop number and that was amazing since then he's been rather hot and cold at his competitions i think putting a little too much pressure on himself when he's given some opportunities but it was nice to see him put some solid programs together he did go for the quad toe and it looked good in both programs it was not as good in the short but he kept the rotation so that was good but in the free skate, that quad toe, triple toe combination was chef's kiss, as I tweeted that out. <laughs> but he did have some minor problems. Also in the free skate, one of his spins didn't go as planned, a uh, little wobble on another jump, and then a fluke fall on a choreographic sequence towards the end of the program. The best part, though, was that he did not give himself a hard time about it. In fact, I love seeing how proud he was of his performance, even to the point where in the kiss and cry after he got his score, he said, oh, shh. <laughs> he had to censor himself because children are watching. But I actually appreciated that from him because we got to see his authentic self. And he was genuinely surprised to be in first place after he skated because we had some other like good competitors skate before him such as Tomoki Hiwatashi and Camden Polkinen and so for Jimmy Ma to land on top of those amazing skaters you know he he stood on his own and that's a great accomplishment for him yeah in the past it's always been kind of hard watching him skate like a relatively clean short and then struggle in the free skate and then the way that he kind of like breaks down afterwards you could tell that he's really upset with himself so it's kind of nice to see him have a moment for himself here at U.S. Nationals where he can be proud of his accomplishment. And I agree with you that the quad toe, triple toe combination early on in the free skate was one of the best quads that I've seen him perform. And it shows that he can do it. Like, we know that he trains it in Texas um, quite consistently. So now it was kind of nice to put it in the national spotlight. And also without an audience, like, making sure that he's, like, um, cheered on during that. Like, it showed that he actually has the mental strength to do so. And I always say, like, it's great to see a skater who might go through bad performances but is able to eventually fix that broken record, as Michelle Kwan pointed out in 1997, Puff Beast, and make it a good one, you know? And I think that what Jimmy was able to accomplish today at in the free skate is evident of that. And... Loved his hoodie of a costume. I thought that was very casual and a statement to make that I can wear a hoodie and I can still land a quad jump and I can skate a really relatively clean program. And um, 
yeah, like I'm glad to see that he's reaching his potential. And I think there's such growth in his skating as well. Like I remember when I first saw him at 2018 U.S. Nationals in San Jose during the Olympic trials. Like, yeah, he had the young, fresh swagger personality that the audience was captivated by. But I don't know, for some reason, like, the three years since then, I really have seen such growth in not just his skating, but as a person, he seems to have grown up quite a bit. And I hope that he can go back to Texas, where I believe he trains, and he can give his dog, who he got a big shout out from Jimmy himself, and um, soak in all the. What a great week it was for him. I really hope he is able to like soak all that great energy. Yeah, I think he kind of had a little bit of an audience. I think because men's was. Since it was the last discipline, some of the athletes were in the arena and were cheering him on. So that was pretty helpful. And the other thing about Jimmy Mars, I think he's starting to um, become more into himself and he's no longer going to be known for that viral program. I believe the free skate here was to a song by Linkin Park. And while that's not my personal cup of tea, I do like that it's different and unique for an American male figure skater that yeah. I very much appreciate. And individuality he has. And I think that anytime someone tries to transcend the sport and try to make it their own and make it better is always a great thing for the sport. So, and I'm pretty much just quoting the great Dick Button um, yeah. in all this stuff, but he really is like, I think every skating fan's mentor to some extent, um, including my own. So... Hopefully he is still watching the U.S. Nationals. I know he's a little bit older now and not doing so great health-wise, but I hope he is still enjoying um, these competitions, these recent competitions. Yeah, we're wishing him the best. And to make it about Jimmy Ma for just a little longer, Kanishka, this sixth-place finish, while I'm proud of him, it was so close. So his total score was 230.78. And then in seventh place, we had Tomoki Hiwatashi at 230.14. So this just shows that Every little point makes a difference. So, you know, maybe oh, like a rotation thing. call or, you know, I'm glad that he landed the jumps he did or got the spin levels that he did minus that one mishap. So he kept it together enough to barely eke out top six. And that's great. <laughs> Definitely. And I think we need to realize that this is not a sport that's just heavily judged based on jumps. There are the other elements that are equally as important. And um, as you probably pointed out in the ladies um, recap, like, those level three spins should not happen, you know? Like, yeah. you need to go for that level four so you can at least garner the base value of the highest level possible. If you're a top lady. <laughs> yeah. And if you're a top man, same thing, you yeah. know? Like, you want to have a top level four spin. If you're competing against Jason Brown, get your levels. <laughs> yep. There's our advice to everybody. That's right. <laughs> so that we rounded out the top six there. Someone told me that they like to watch my videos to know which one's to watch after the fact because I don't watch live here's your notice watch the top, the top six short and long so we're just gonna breeze through some of the other results and in seventh place as I mentioned earlier Tomoki Hiwatashi one of my personal favorites Kanishka this was not his competition I call him the little jumping bean that makes me smile Ooh, with the short program and the free skate you know what the jumps were not working for him unfortunately yeah like he had glimpses of potential like yeah even stage, he, so. he was still overall very entertaining just not at the same level i was expecting so you see his great qualities but i think even in the free skate it looked like he was running out of steam at the end of the program which i'm not used to seeing from him i know he's known like jason for the bielman position on his spin and that didn't go quite well in the free skate but you know what? This could be a good lesson for him. We know what he's capable of in the past. Yeah, like as I said, like we saw glimpses of the Tomoki that we kind of expect. Mm -hmm. But this year has been like no other for a lot of these athletes. So I do kind of give a lot of um, leeway as far as um, how they all skated. Yes, I think we, should, we should say like we are proud of them for just coming to nationals and competing their programs because it takes a lot of courage and bravery on all of these athletes part to come out to the national championships and yeah as someone as two viewers of the sport justin i think we can say that we are just proud of all the athletes for um showing them showing us what they've got this past week yeah don't disagree with you there and then in eighth place 
we have another beautiful skater. The jumps just wasn't working. Camden Polkinen. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I think everyone else knows. Everything he does on the ice is so beautiful. He is probably second to Jason Brown in lyrical interpretation of the music. Like you could just tell he's a super classical skater that really connects with the music on a different level than anyone else could. Yeah, unfortunately, when the jumps slip, you can't get the marks to really place yeah. well. I did know for sure he's the kind of skater where if he misses most of his jumps, he'll be in the top 10. And he was eighth here. And, you know, some skaters are clean and barely make the top 10. So that just shows how great the quality of his core skating skills are. Yeah, Camden is someone that I think wears his heart on his sleeve. So sometimes when things are going well, it goes really well. If it goes bad, it goes really bad. It's almost as if he like beat himself up after the short program, like after doubling that combination, fan combination. Like it seemed like the rest of the energy just like kind of zapped. But I hope he knows that he is someone that is very musical and can interpret music. And that's kind of hard to say about some of the men that compete, whether domestically or internationally speaking. So he is a skater skater in that sense. And it's all about just consistency and even just getting one quad. I think that's kind of, he's kind of, he kind of reminds me to some extent as far as how we were talking about Jason Brown when he was younger, you know, like someone who definitely has the second mark under his belt but the technical is just as important. Um, so once he's able to find the balance of the two, I expect him to be higher than eighth. I expect him to be top five, if not the podium. And I think we saw that with his performances at Skate Canada a few seasons back, where I think he was like second in the short, and then he just fell off the podium in the free skate. So I do love his skating, Justin, as I think I told you um, outside of these calls. Um, it's just about really honing in on the potential that you have and really going for it. You know, like you can't in this day, day you can't really pop a jump, you know, like we talk about it all the time in the ladies discipline about like doubling a uh, jump in the short program. is like the sinners of sin, you know, like zero rotate, <laughs> like go for the rotation, you know? So, um, and I think it's the same is true in the men's. And um, so I'm just, it's disappointing, yet I think the season is like, uh, it could be a learning season for a lot of these young athletes. And he is still relatively young, so I think he has another era in him, if not these coming Olympics um, in Beijing. Yeah, and you compared him to Jason Brown. The thing with Camden is that he can do the technical elements, so it's more yeah. about consistency. We've seen the quads, we see the triple triples, the triple axle. When it's landed really well, sometimes it goes away. And now that I'm thinking about this, Kanishka, we talk about some of the, the, these other skaters. So it just makes me appreciate what Nathan Chen does for yes. winning competition. So Vincent popped a jump. Jason, I believe, popped a jump. Uh, then we have fourth and fifth place finishers going clean. So it's like Nathan's always leading the way, showing that a consistent performance can take you places. Yeah, definitely. And I think that is why Nathan Chen is the elite athlete he is. Um, <laughs> Interesting you know, choice of words. <laughs> well, I think I purposely said it because there were some fans on Twitter who were trying to discredit him for calling himself an elite athlete, but he definitely is. And I think even the fans of the other competitor that I'm not going to mention right now <laughs> um, would probably say the same thing. I think yeah. if you were to ask the athlete what you think of Nathan Chen, you would say... He's a great athlete and one of my best competitors. Um, so for any fan to discredit Nathan Chen's ability on the ice is very faulty and um, is a little bit biased. And and I think elite is the proper word to use. That's not, you know, being arrogant or propping yourself up. In fact, a lot of the men at U.S. Nationals are elite athletes. When you're at it's this kind of level, you are the athlete. Yeah, when you're at this level, you are considered an elite <laughs> athlete because you are in the amateur skating world and you're competing to go to the World Championship and the Olympics. Um, then this professional skating, and then that has kind of been something that has been missing as of late. But who knows? Maybe once Nathan Chen is done competing, um, perhaps maybe one day we can have a professional skating scene again. However, mm -hmm. I don't. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Nathan Chen ends up doing other superhuman things in other fields. So that's how humble he is and how multifaceted Nathan Chen is. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm just in awe of his abilities. So Me too. The other shout out I wanted to give is 10th place finisher. Congratulations on your top 10 placement, Din Tran from San Francisco. He's just someone I love watching compete because he's someone who loves being at nationals and he enjoys skating. Like it's fun for him. He's always well put together too. Best outfits, best programs, and he really sells the choreography. And you know, the jumps are there for the most part. I'm just excited to him to gain more experience and gain momentum. I believe he might be working with Jeremy Abbott. So that's only going to take you to good places. <laughs> yeah, I think if you work with Jeremy Abbott, you're definitely going to improve on your skating skills and art. Like, you know what I think of Jeremy Abbott. Like, so talented. Um, and yeah, like, he's now in Oakland um, helping out Alyssa Liu um, as well. So yeah, I, I, I think that his trajectory at U.S. Nationals might be steadily going up um, in the next couple of years, especially if he continues to put out good performances. I agree. He might have that magic touch later on. I say later on because right now he's still a relatively new coach. And is there anything else you wanted to say about the competitors? I think I said it earlier, yeah. but yeah, I'm really proud of all the athletes that competed here at the um, U.S. Nationals. During a pandemic. During a pandemic, they survived. Thank you, Las Vegas, for hosting an event that was very uh, in a bubble, but kept all the athletes safe. And it brought a lot of enjoyment to us skating fans to have a competition to look forward to. And thank you to all the athletes competing for putting on a great show. And all the best to you guys and your guys' future endeavors. Yes, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. <laughs> this is like our third take on this recap. I just want to say, if you've subscribed to my channel recently, thank you. Viewed my content for the first time this week. I appreciate you all. I'm sad that Nationals is over. If I find a reason to film more videos for my YouTube channel on skating, I'll try my best to. But otherwise, this has been a great week of fun. I've enjoyed filming these. And I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye, and thank you again, Kanishka. <laughs> of course, yep. Thank you again.